Hi everyone, today I am probably speaking to India's brightest 18 year old. I first met Chirag in the Bal Shakti Puraskar with the Pradhan Mantri this January and since then I have not stopped hearing about your extraordinary achievements from you know having the JEE All India rank of one to recently being admitted in MIT's class of 2024. Thank you so, so much for being here with me. And, you know, I hope everyone watching this will have a better understanding of what it really takes to crack what sounds like both the Indian as well as the American dream at the same time. Uh, so, Chirag, how are you doing? I'm Chirag Falor. I'm from the class of MIT 2024. And I'm currently inclined towards majoring in physics, maths, and a minor in astronomy, probably. And I'm on a pass the record now. So, all my classes right now at MIT are quite tough. That's really interesting and it sort of brings me to my first question which is, you know, you literally topped India's hardest entrance examination. How did that prepare you for the level of difficulty that's there at MIT? Do you feel you were adequately prepared or do you still feel like it's extremely difficult? Yeah, so uh, preparing for GE and uh, it was quite a long preparation, like four years or something. Mm -hmm. So this definitely helped me uh, for the classes at MIT. I actually ASC'd out, which is like uh, passing the final exam and skipping it, the prerequisite of like 801, 802, which is mechanics and uh, electrostatics respectively, and even 1801 and 1802. I mean, usually the first years at MIT have to take these classes to get them out of the way, but uh, after having so much preparation for JE, I could just give an exam and skip them, which gives me a edge over the others and even uh, helps me take more interesting classes like sooner in the semester. You hear a lot of things about the Indian education system. Some are bad, some are good, but it's really interesting to see that, you know, in India's probably toughest competitive uh, system, you've managed to be so well prepared that you've skipped classes which MIT first year students are taking and you've literally leveled up to the next level. I feel like there's a lot of distance between um, you and what people think is like the average student, you know, everyone sort of glorified you, you know, since you've got rank on, since you've got so many achievements. So just to make everybody realize you have the same, the same kind of situation. How is being a student at Zoom University? How is doing virtual classes online like for you, you know, waking up late, waking up early? So actually I had quite a different scenario because I had to give the J exam even after attending classes. I didn't change my schedule for MIT in the September. I had to, uh, I went ahead in the classes uh, by a week or so, so that I can get a week free just before the J advance to prepare for it. And wow. uh, yeah, and after the September, I I just literally shifted my schedule to Eastern time. And I used to wake up at 4.30 PM and sleep at 8.30. Oh my God, that's insane. So you sleep at 8.30 in the morning? Yeah. Another question that I, I really wanted to ask you was, since you got the Pradhan Mantri Bal Shakti Puraskar, since you got such a high rank, you know, I think the whole nation has sort of started looking at you and, you know, it's almost a little scary to be in front of so many um, media channels, so many outlets and getting this much attention as just an 18 year old. So how was all of that to process and, you know, how did you cope with it? Were there some challenges that came along with it? How has the whole experience been? Okay, yeah, I actually faced so many challenges because there was quite a backlash actually because I was leaving India after giving the J exam and I mean people used to, people on social media say that I shouldn't do that and some are like supporting my decision but I stayed away from those mainly just to not divert my attention and another main reason which is kind of an, another main reason is that uh, I had to focus on MIT classes because I got behind. So this actually helped me not to like get diverted by the social media and uh, like see all those comments by the people. And yeah. also one of the things which helped me is like a gradual increase in media attention. So in August, I got the IOA medal and I got some media attention at least. Mm -hmm. Like, and then the Bal Shakti Pushkar increased it then. J main rank 12, I mean, 
took it, it to a whole other level. It was in a stepwise manner, so yeah, I could, I could know like how to actually interact with media and stuff, and also that Indian media like changes the comments. They literally said that getting into MIT is easier than IIT, which is like so wrong. Right, exactly. Yeah, I I noticed that even when a lot of people ask you questions, they're like, "Oh yeah, pre- preparing for the SAT takes as much effort, takes as many hours as preparing for the JE." But that's really not the case. You know, the SAT is a relatively much easier exam when it comes to like all these engineering based exams, which are much more technical in detail. Just to give everybody, you know, your perspective. What are the differences and opportunities when it comes to your field in physics and astrophysics that lies at a place like MIT and a place like you know IIT Bombay, which, if I'm not wrong, was your second choice? Yeah. So basically, I think most of the topers go in IIT Bombay CS, right? And yeah, IITs have a more towards the industry outlook. They prefer they kind of prepare students for the industry jobs rather and. I think it's almost the Indian environment to get, like they usually go for good placement rather than good studies or something. Right. So yeah, MIT has much better research in physics and specifically astrophysics and astronomy. So yeah, even the professors there are are quite more friendlier than uh, what I've seen the professors here. So mm-hmm. I could easily connect with them and. I mean that would be a major boost in the field I I want to go in. I I would like to pursue research and go towards grad school and towards academia. So the prospects are better at MIT. Right. So you know, just just gauging from what you're saying, you're saying that you know the professors are more accessible. You can have more interactions with them. You can have deeper learning. And the outlook at a place like MIT versus IIT is that you know you're more channeled towards academia. The focus is on learning and not you know the output you get once you come outside of an environment like that. Now I just want to go a little bit into your history and sort of understand you know the journey to MIT and. you know what i want to understand is you said in the beginning that you know mit was it was a dream but it wasn't really something you were working towards you were always working towards iit so what at what point for you did mit turn from a dream to like a goal you were actually trying to achieve yeah so uh, it was a sort of a dream till the end of 11th actually mm-hmm. i mean there's a popular misconception that you need three gold olympiad medals to get into mit and sorts of that So yeah I mean I didn't get any medal in 9th or 10th standard so I had almost lost hope but uh, in the end of 11th like in the pre departure camp of IOA I met uh, Dhey Gandhi and he just guided me about the admission process and I went to the M- mitadmissions.org site and that gave a lot of info about how I could apply so uh, it was mainly the end of August when I started preparing for the sad exams and sad subjects and mm-hmm. uh, even started preparing my application then so i didn't have any plans to go so how important would you say it is you know if you don't have as many resources how important and how would you say you can find a mentor who can sort of guide you down the application process and help you realize the things that you thought you couldn't have achieved basically i didn't have any mentor for mit as such right. i mean i had a mentor which is ajay sir for the je and other olympiad stuff but right. for mit i had to do basically all things on my own and yeah, just my father reviewed my essays before submitting and mm-hmm. uh even for the sat preparation i just used the online resources for right yeah you know and that that's really interesting because like now that i think about it it sounds like you did everything yourself So you know what are some of the best free resources you came across that you would recommend to other people who are coming from backgrounds where they might not have access to opportunities like counselors. I know that even you didn't use a counselor. So what are some of the best free resources you had that sort of you think helped you prepare you for your journey? Okay, so first of all, the admission websites are a great resource. I mean, mm-hmm. that's the first resource which you should look out for, and that gives a very good idea about. how the admission process goes and then second i mean for sat i used khan academy uh there are just too many questions over for the english part and maths is significantly easier for indians so right 
yeah i did about 2000 questions for each part of sar wow and for the for essays i had to basically write essays on my own there there were some uh for mit at least i i just wrote i saw some sample essays and wrote the essay of my own i actually i don't think my essay was that great i mean even the mm-hmm. vocabulary was quite low but now i realize that it might not be a significant part of the process it's just to realize that you are an individual and to tell your story i mean you shouldn't you you should decorate it so much but uh, if you can't i mean it's okay and after admission officer probably understand that. on your point about vocabulary i think one of the most Im- interesting things you brought up is you should just tell your story and even if it's not that great you know the quality of your writing admissions officers know where you're coming from so they can understand if you know you don't have the best grammar you don't have the best vocabulary you're not able to tell the most compelling story because you might come from a place where you don't have access to as many resources as you know a standard applicant might have if you're applying from a place like india with so many applications going from so many different backgrounds <laughs> one of the last questions i definitely want to ask you is everyone talks about you know your successes and your achievements and you know you've got all of these accolades you know but what was one period of time where you faced a significant challenge in your whole journey throughout high school okay so yeah challenges of were there like throughout the year i i mostly had to split my time between two different commitments right but i got experience enough that i could manage my time better and also without having a smartphone you you just get lots of free time so right uh, that was also helpful but uh, any significant challenge as such i i don't think i faced anywhere except mm-hmm. if i didn't get into mit i mean that would be a very major setback for me and yeah that would just reshape the way i used to approach things one last thing i'd like you know everyone to take away from this entire process is that you had to work really really hard to try and balance both of those worlds you know balancing the iit je world and balancing mit but thank you so much rak this has been a really really interesting interview for me to have you know it's given me a perspective like i personally didn't apply to mit you know when i had applied to all the foreign colleges as well um just solely because i was not a stem student but i i never really completely related with you know the whole the, the struggle that a lot of students face when they're preparing for engineering exams and then also doing mit at the same time like the feat you achieved is really really commendable and i'm sure you get that a lot but it's really insane to to watch you do so many things thanks a lot for this interview